Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, people. Let's see what time is it? We got about three minutes here. Give three minutes to roll in. Happy Wednesday. George Rooks here. Should be a good episode. He's an interesting, interesting case of a of an athlete, right? He can kind of play multiple roles. Where will he end up? Seemingly better in a 3-4 than a 4-3. So we'll see where he ends up, but uh, excited to go through his film today. Oh, God, man, I'm tired. Tired as hell. I had one of those days after work. It was like I got to get some stuff done, and it's like, nope, it's nap time. <laughs> Thankfully, I've been waking up early to go on my runs, so I didn't have to, you know, didn't have to skip a run today. But man, hit me hard. Tell you what, it's tough. Yeah, he's four star, six four, two seventy. He's got great size, two sixty or two seventy. Let's go to Michigan site. Michigan George Rooks. Yeah, he's listed at 270 on the official website. Great stats, though, man. Look at that. Look at that junior year. 71 tackles, 15 tackles for loss. Nine and a half sacks. Dude's got a great stat line. All right, we'll give another minute. Let people trickle in. But I hope you guys had a good Wednesday. George Rooks here. Number 19 defensive tackle. 260 on the composite for New Jersey. Got some great offers. Right? You go through his offer list. He's got Bama, Auburn, Duke. I guess Duke's not a great one. Georgia, Miami, OSU, Notre Dame, Penn State, Tennessee. He's got a great offer list. So yeah, it's, it's more of a question of where and when for him than if for me. I feel like I say that a lot, but I'm, I'm, I like him. It's just going to take some time. All right, we at 8.30. All right, we got a few seconds here. Pull up the pen. Pull up the film. And we'll get going. Let's see. We're going to do... What color are they? Let's pull up this film real quick. Bring it here. Get this going. All right, they're blue. So yeah, we'll go blue for them. Opponents are gonna be this color. All right, cool. Let's make sure I make my face smaller. Bring down the music a little bit too. I think that's a little loud. That's probably good. Okay, let's get it cooking. Let's get it going here. So here he is. Oops. Line up on the outside here. You're going to see him all over the place on this film. Sometimes he's on, you know, this like nine tech, more defensive end. Sometimes you'll see him on the inside a little bit less often. You'll see him on the outside. So he's definitely a guy who they like to deploy all over the defensive line. Some you're going to see a lot for Michigan as well. So his hands are something that's mentioned early and often in his film. Advanced use of the hands here. Okay, he doesn't strike me as a guy who fires off the snap super hard, right? His get off explosiveness doesn't pop off the screen. More of a bull rusher, right? He's not going to beat guys around the edge, but I like where his hand placement is. I like his extension of his arms. That looks pretty good, right? He does have a refined swim move. Okay, you see that he he'll deploy that quite a bit. Or when he's going inside there, he's able to use that swim move very efficiently. And that's something that will translate extremely well to the inside. There, decent change of direction. Track that one down. Here he is again on the outside. Not fooled by that one. If you're background noise, this guy's doing some yard work. Can't control that, so apologize for that. Here, that spin move again. Or spin move. Swim move, excuse me, right there. 
guy was caught leaning, right? Give him the ole, able to reset, put his nose in. Still defensive end here. Again, he's much better when working to the inside than the outside, just because his speed isn't really, you know, his best utilization. There he is. He had a good get off here, though. All right, able to step across here. 74 took one bad step here. He was just slow. So decent get off there, shooting the gap. So yeah, his bull, his bull rush is good, right? And that's because he has solid hands, able to get into the chest of offensive linemen. Would like to see him explode through this a little bit more, right? He kind of ex he saw this guy coming, and kind of waited there, right? He could have exploded through this guy a little bit more. I do like he dipped a little bit here, right, to take on that block. But he more accepted the block and then used his hands to disengage there. Would like to see him kind of plow into that guy a little bit more. Be a little more disruptive. There, okay, he does he does go around the edge here. But not not like elite speed, right? Not elite bend around the outside for a defensive end prospect. So again, this is like him going to the inside here. That's where his bread and butter is. Use his footwork. Able to use that swim move. He's good at that. That's where he's best. Ca helps cause a turnover. It's a good play. Good assignment there. He runs a little bit stiff, but good tracking overall. Here again, not the explosive get off, but good instincts here. Again, sorry about the leaf blower in the backyard. <laughs> but um, you can see here, does a good job just recognizing, hey, there's gonna be a bootleg. Good eyes, able to change direction there. Get the tackle. Again, he played a lot of defensive ends, so we're not gonna see him on the interior all that much here. Oh God, give me a second. All right. Sorry, guys. Shouldn't be long for the leaf blower. <laughs> Apologize for that. Can't time this thing. There. Again, would, I mean, his hand placement is good. Just would like to see him be a little bit more explosive. He's out of New Jersey, so I'm honestly not sure exactly how good the competition level is in his specific league. St. Peter's Prep. Doesn't seem like it's the best. I'll tell you what, man. He he doesn't look 270 here, right? He looks he looks a lot smaller than that, and that's a good thing. That means he's able to carry weight well, right? So when you're projecting a guy to move to the inside, how well is he gonna be able to bulk up? All right, a little bit of a false step here, right? He should have kept going initially. He kind of like caught himself there, but could to continue on work into the play there. Here on the outside again. Good assignment football there, right? Caused a turnover. So sometimes he has a tendency of kind of like olay, olaying guys, right? And that's kind of with the swim move. He doesn't, sometimes he gets caught like a little bit too high, right? And he kind of swipes hands away. So that's good to like swipe hands away. I would like to see him extend more, right? Get his hands in there, extend more. He's better at swatting with that swim move. Things just matter of strength as well. That should come with more strength, his ability to extend with those arms. Okay, that was a senior season. Now we're looking at junior season. Here he is operating on the inside a little bit more. Again, he has good footwork on the inside to beat interior offensive linemen. That's good overall. There, man. <laughs> There, good job here, right? He kind of shuffles for a second, then says, "Nope, I'm going for a, I'm going for just a bull rush here." He able to catch that guy napping, timber. Here on the inside again. Wow. Yeah, I mean he's versatile, right? That's the thing that that I notice a lot. And he looks really athletic for his size. 
again, you know, like 250 probably at this point around that. He looks really light on his feet. He looks more like a jumbo linebacker playing defensive end to me. So his ability to put on weight is likely uh, extremely good or extremely plausible to make him into a defensive tackle. And in a 3-4, you'll still be able to utilize his athleticism as kind of that defensive end in certain scenarios. I ooh, I like that. This is a great clip. Look how much speed he has here. Right? Now something he's been able to showcase in his film at this point. But uh on this stunt here, right? So you got this guy going across here, and then you're going to have rooks kind of coming through. Uh, because this guy, it's all about getting this guy to block down this way to kind of follow this guy, and that would open up the stunt for rooks. So if we slow it down, since he follows him there, right? That right guard follows him. That opens the door for Rooks. And he, he accelerates. He closes pretty quickly there. So again, overall athleticism, it's there. And that's like the eyebrow razor clip for me so far. They're able to secure the sack. Now he's on the outside again. Again, again, not like the most dynamic pass rusher. right? I think he's going to be a better run defender than pass rusher and again this is i mean this is a good play but again he's more of like get guys off balance and then get by get around them right so maybe maybe i'm wrong if he's on the interior these sorts of moves are what win you reps on pass rush right not really on run on run you want to be able to hold up Offensive lineman. If you do that, you know, if you're a lane guys like this, sometimes that'll open up a hole instead of constricting it for running lanes. But he does a good job, right? Getting around that using his his short area quickness, I would say. His footwork, his hands there. Guys are leaning into him. He's he's quick on his feet to make those moves and he's coordinated with his with his hand motions there. Again, he's not like I mean, that guy's huge, right? Seventy eight. So he's just taking advantage of that guy being off balance, being able to use that spit or that uh, swim move to get around him. So yeah, it, he, he's going to be a guy to just really watch in the weight room, right? Look, watch his weight over the next couple of years. What what does that look like? What does that growth kind of look like in his weight? Because if he can comfortably get up to two ninety or so in in within year one, then you're, then you're going to have something really interesting. Here, good hands there, extension. Just able to work his way through. I really like him on stunts. I would work him on a lot of stunts. Oh, good job getting his hand up. There, again, batting another ball down. Yeah, he doesn't fly off the screen to me as like a defensive end, as a pass rusher. I like him on the interior, where he's dealing with guys he can outwork with his footwork here this is a good job again another stunt right another stunt you have 52 crashing inside here and then he's just going to loop around here since this guy's following you're going to have this free lane for rooks it just happens that's where the play's going so a little bit fortunate here but good closing speed to track that down so yeah added strength is is one area explosiveness off the snap i don't think that's something that people usually have or they don't, right? So I don't think that's ever going to be something that's truly a plus for him. Just got to improve it as much as you can. Yeah, I like his footwork, though. I like his footwork. He, I just want to see more bull rushes, but he doesn't really have the upper body strength to really rely on that in his high school film here. So that'll just come later. I like his frame, right, at 6'4". He's got a great frame for the interior as well. Good arms. So he's a guy I think his ranking is is extremely on point. You know, like solid four-star, not top-tier level because he's still got lots of things to work on. But um, so it's just going to take time, right? If he was already close to 290 as a defensive tackle, he'd be there. He's just not not there yet, so it's going to take some time. So that's why he's not, you know, a top seventy-five 
overall guy or something. Okay, sophomore clips here, and then that'll be it here. Yeah, interior there, so this is sophomore year. Again, working on the interior a little bit more. Oh, he showed a good get off there. Yeah, that was that was, that was a decent pop off the snap. Use of the hands there, keeping his outside shoulder free. This is important, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. So he's able to extend his arms here. And then look how he works right here to get his outside arm free, right? Right there, you can see both arms on the guy, and then he works, kind of punches with that left arm on the left shoulder of the offensive tackle. Right there, he punches on the outside shoulder. What's up, Andrew Decker? What is up? Here, working on the inside again. Gets a little beat there. I mean, not really beat. Quarterback just decides to take off. Able to redirect, get the sack. He's got some long arms. It's good to see. Here, again, main thing that's standing out to me, this is sophomore year, but just strength, right? So he's kind of working as a five tech here, it looks like. Again, man, that swim move, he loves that swim move. Defensive end here. Screen pass, gets a hand on it. As we're going to do the nose, look at that, man. He just, <laughs> he is a swim move fiend. That is his go-to. Works well. He's going to have to mix it up, though, right? Next level is not going to work all the time. My face was big this whole time. You guys didn't say it. Oh, brutal. I thought I changed it. It's all right. Since it's offensive or defensive line, my face have, hasn't covered a whole lot of this, I hope. Anyway, apologies. And we're almost done with the film already, too. Brutal. I need to have an auto auto thing as soon as I start, start it. It needs to flip over. Andrew Decker loving the concrete potential. Some of the lower ranked guys. He's not, he's not lower ranked, but I agree. A lot of the guys have, even the higher ranked guys have a lot more potential, right? They're, they're guys who have potential of a top 100 guy just for one reason or the other. They're just not quite there yet. And that's where Michigan needs to live. You know, you're not going to get top 100 guys. If you can get a steady stream of top 300 guys who will just take an, an extra year or two to turn into one of those guys, that's all you need. That's all you need. If you can be consistent with that, you can you can live off of that. There's that swim move again inside. Here again, using his long arms, right? Look look how long his arms are. He's got pretty. I, I'd be interested to see his uh, his wingspan. All right, that's it. Uh, and I only just moved my face away as well. Sorry guys. So yeah. Um, what are our final thoughts here? What was my comp for him? My comp was Matt Godin. Matt Godin was a guy who came in as a 6'5", 270 defensive end, defensive tackle. He was around 400 nationally ranked. So he was a guy who looked pretty lean at a 270 out of high school as well. But a lot of people were projecting him into a defensive tackle, but he was kind of that mold, right? The guy who had defensive end experience would grow into defensive tackle eventually, but when, who knows? Wasn't that explosive off the snap. Need to add strength out of high school. So that's a lot of the similar things that you see for George Rooks. Now, it took a while for, for Matt Godin, right? It took a few years. Uh, he emerged as a solid player late in his career, was honorable mention all Big Ten in his fifth year at, at U, University of Michigan. So, um, Andrew Decker, we could be better slash more consistent than Wisconsin if we help these guys develop to the next level. Wisconsin gets guys that are just like living in caves in Wisconsin, right? They're just like, they just find these, these monsters that don't even really get ranked all that much. It's like Narnia. 
out in Wisconsin where they find these guys. So these are guys that Michigan's taking. They're they're actually scouted pretty well. Um, but I mean, I I see Michigan more in a Clemson situation right now. You go back and look at Clemson's classes. They were consistently outside the top 10, always in the top 20, you know, top 15. But you look at their their classes before they won a national championship, they were right around 10, 15 for five, six years leading up into, leading up into you know, when they hit it big. Part of that's being in, you know, a conference that's pretty weak right now. And capitalizing on that, you're you're not going to have that situation with Michigan, with Ohio State right there. So you're a bit unlucky, but uh, you know, I think I think this is this class for Michigan. This these are this is the type of class you you need, right? You don't need top five classes every single year to break through. Okay, you need to win in order to get top five classes, right? You do. You you need to win. And Michigan hasn't gotten to the playoff. All right. I mean, to prove my point, let's let's go back to Clemson, right? And you go back to some of their classes before they started winning big. Okay. Right here. So 2014 was 11. You got number nine in 2015. 16 in 2016. Right? They're hovering right around the top 10. They're not rattling off, you know number one, number two, number three classes. Now they're hitting on a lot of their guys, right? They're hitting on a lot of these guys. But only once they start making the playoff, winning some playoff games, you know, then and only then do they really start to bring in, you know, consistent top 10, top five classes. That's it. So that's that's where Michigan's at. You look at Michigan's rank, Compared to Clemson's rank around that time, the only difference is moving into 2020 and moving into 2021. These are top five classes, right? You're able to capitalize on that success, and uh, and that's what you can do. So anyway, George Rooks is like the exact guy that you need if you're Michigan to, and you just need to stack those classes. I think Michigan has consistency is it and retention class retention okay and there's key positions right like i'd be stupid if i didn't mention that like trevor lawrence you know despite that not being a number one class for clemson he was number one overall recruit and if you can get a consistent quarterback which is the main differentiator between clemson breaking through and michigan not breaking through you know it's it's roster composition turn minimizing turnover and not leaving holes at certain position groups. That's it. That's it. If you can consistently get, you know, not leave roster gaps and be able to fill those with transfers and just bring in consistent top 15 talent. That's all you need. That's all you need. And I said it before and I'll say it again. This highest ranked class under Jim Harbaugh was the most... Um, painful that's not the word the most it set it set michigan back the most this class did okay dpj good solid got drafted caesar ruiz amazing ari solomon transferred luigi villain a lot of injuries okay drew singleton transferred ambry thomas good opted out but really good jordan anthony transferred chuck filiaga depth Tariq black Injuries transferred. Tom McCaffrey, good at times. Transferred. Nico Collins, underutilized. Nothing against him. Oliver Martin transferred. Josh Ross, solid. James Hudson got transferred around Irving Bay. Jalen Kelly Powell transferred. Corey Mullen Hatcher, medical uh, medical retired. Samuels um, uh, transferred. Donovan Jeter, still around. Jerry Hall transferred. Benjamin St. Just transferred. Stuber, good. Actually good. He's a hit. Jamark Woods transferred. Brad, Ho- Brad Hawkins, good. Joe Honigford, depth. Philip Paella, transferred, right? Quiddy Pay, the best. Ben Mason, amazing. Kurt Taylor transferred. Brad Robbins, right? You just can't do that. You just can't do that. 
with that class, that many transfers, what was that, 17 transfers or something ridiculous? It's just you can't build on that, right? And when when do you see the effects of that class? 2020, okay? That's when those guys are third year into their collegiate career. That's when you depend on this class. Michigan couldn't depend on that. More than that, you go to the 2018 class. What does getting the number five class in 2017 do? It takes up a lot of spots. How can you how can you pr- promise playing time for the 2018 class when you just brought in number five class, right? If you don't have continued success winning the playoff, things like that, it's tough. It's tough. If you rely on immediate immediate playing time as one of your main selling points, which I think Michigan had to do, you're going to have a hard time the next year attracting that same level of talent. Um, Christian Smith, I know it's off football topic. Thoughts on Dickinson declaring? Yeah, it's amazing. He should do that. Um, do I expect him back? 80% yes. If you're not a... If you're not, you know, getting to the NBA... If you're not submitting your name to get feedback, then you're kind of silly, right? If he if he's able to develop a three point game, more effectively use his right hand, Dickinson will absolutely be a first round pick next year, or the following year, I should say. After not this year's draft, but the, after his sophomore year. So I think that's 100, percent you know, the way to do it. It's it's free evaluation, right? It is free free scouting on hey this is what you need to do to get drafted in the first round that's it why why would why would you say no to that so Dickinson Smith his name uh is extremely smart for him and you know if a team promises him a first round I think you should take it 100 percent but I don't think he's there yet I think he needs to be a little bit more versatile like I said with his right hand if he can showcase a three-point shot I would expect Howard to try to help him out and get him incorporated with the offense next year with a deep game because Dickinson can't shoot it. So yeah, man, everyone freaking out. It's like, oh, he's gone. I mean, Michigan's got Musa Diabate coming or coming in, you know, like sure. It'll be a little bit thin at that position if Dickinson does go, but it'll change the team. It'll change the team for sure. But I bet Dickinson's back hundred percent. Uh, not quite ready. Sky is the limit with his potential for George Rooks, for sure. Hope the new new coaches light the fire for the team. I'd love to see fire for an entire season. Man, that's something. That's something. Coaches is one thing. It's. I I'm of the mindset that it's more of the players. All right, coaches can preach and try to cultivate a, an environment that is very exciting, very positive, and try to create that aura, falls on the players, man. Are, are the players invested? Are the players going to get on each other? Are they going to, you know, they're the ones playing. They're the ones motivating each other. And what does that look like? You know, I think 2020 was a weird year for a lot of reasons. I don't know. I think it's on the, I think it's on the players. So I think, you know, coaches can help cultivate it. You know, I think coaches can bring it down, you know, maybe they can bring down the energy, you know, unintentionally or, you know, I don't see Don Brown as a guy who's willing to play music at practice, right? They've seemingly been doing that more and feeding a little bit more into the culture um, that they want it to be. But, But I don't know, man. I don't know. I put it more on the players than the coaches. Some of those signing for the stars classes are hard to look back on for what we got out of them. Yeah, it was a you know tough couple of years, and I mean you look you look at this 2018 class, and I've said this a lot, relatively you know productive class. Hutchinson and McGrone were hits, obviously a little tough with Sims, Muhammad, and Milton out. Um, Muhammad for you know creepy reasons. Um, But I think he was still a great athlete if he, you know, stayed on his course. But uh, Sims and Milton, you know, they're no longer with the program. But Mayfield was a hit. Hayes a hit. Jimin Green's coming along. Christian Turner. I think Christian Turner was solid. Just no room. Upshaw to be determined, right? 
So, I mean, you hit on a lot of these lower guys, right? Vincent Gray, I know he had his rough points, but for a 700 overall guy providing depth, that's a pretty good hit. Barrett was a hit. Schoenmacher's a hit. Haskins a hit. Ronnie Bell, massive hit. So in terms of the lower ranked guys, you know, from 700 through not ranked, incredible. The hit rate on those guys. Then you have a couple of these top guys hit pretty pretty hard as well. So that that 2018 class, man, if if this class didn't come together with some of these gems, right? Some of these guys really contributing, Harbaugh would have been gone already. Uh, I personally think that uh, McCarthy won't start day one. McCarthy's not on the roster anymore, so I, I sure don't think he will. <laughs> um, Bowman or McNamara? It's gonna be McNamara. Oh, sorry, I read McCath. <laughs> I read McCarthy as McCaffrey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is how tired I am, guys. Oh, my God. Yeah, J.J. McCarthy. No, J.J. McCarthy, it would be crazy if he started right away. I I, I don't see it. Yeah, it, it's going to be McNamara. And then uh, McCarthy will come in and really challenge next year. But we have enough talent right now to compete this year, like 11-2. Defense is going to be rough, man. Defense is going to be rough. Michigan schedule 2021. Um, I Can I rant about Google real quick? Why is this the way to show a football schedule? And whose decision was it? Here, let me make my face smaller so you can actually see it. This is idiotic. Okay. Who decided this? I don't want to read September 4th, September 11th to the right, and then go down. Like, that's stupid. Give me a single list. How hard is it to give me a single list just like this? This is what I need. Chronological. I don't want a book, right? This is like read left to right, and then I got to see more? This is ridiculous. I hate this. (laughs) I've always hated this. Over the past, like, I don't know, five years, I've been looking for a team schedule and the default is this garbage. I hate it. Oh, it's my least favorite thing. It's my least favorite thing. Okay. Um, For the schedule though, uh, 10 and two is tough, man. 10 and two is tough. Cause you got Ohio state at Penn state. Indiana is always like, you know, I shouldn't say always, but they're starting to look like a tough matchup. At Wisconsin, Washington early. I see four losses on this schedule. I do. I see four losses. OSU. Penn State is always like a little bit overrated, but Ohio St- of of these five games, Ohio State, Penn State, Indiana, Wisconsin, Washington. You could argue maybe three and two is the best case there. Right, and that's what you're getting at, ten to two. But man, I see, I see three to four losses. It'd be shocking if they lost all five of those. But uh, I see four losses there. And then even with like your other games, right, like Nebraska, Northwestern, Michigan State, Maryland, I could see one of those being a random ass loss. Right, it's college football. So that's why, I mean, that's why the line is like eight wins this season. Right, it's between. It's between eight and four and seven and five for me. Just because defensive consistency, it just it's not gonna be there, man. Say what you want about Don Brown. He had a system in place for, you know, literal years. Okay? And you bring in a guy who's not only never been a defensive coordinator, but it's his first year uh, under a new system, it's just gonna be tough. And when you're on when it's when you're on defense and you're being reactionary. There's a lot more to learn, okay? If, if you have a new offense, as long as I have my playbook down, I know my place. I'm not reacting to a whole lot unless I'm quarterback, right? I have my an offensive line. So maybe this might not be the best <laughs> approach, but on offense, I have a job, okay? And my job is to block this guy or to clear this lane or to run this route, uh, run to this hole, whatever. Defense is all about minute details. I have to read where this guy goes. I have to fill 
fit this gap. I have to, there's just a lot of read and react. And whenever you're reading and reacting, that takes a lot of time. You have to be comfortable. You have to be able to not only understand the defensive playbook, but understand what do I do when this guy does one of these seven options and do that immediately. Reading and reacting to someone else's movements is infinitely more difficult to me than I have to run this route on this play. That's just memorization. So excited about Quorum. Quorum is a guy, I'm gonna be coming up with a video of, let me see, is Mason Brew has a depth chart out, right? Mason, do, Mason Brew depth chart, we have to have it out there. Yeah, guessing Michigan's too deep. This is probably. Um, Blake Quorum's a guy I'm probably most excited about this year. So I'm gonna do a couple videos this year of like um, five breakout players. So I'm thinking like five breakout players, um, five most important players, and then five most impactful freshmen probably. Those first two videos might not be, because Blake Corum I think is expected to break out, okay? When I'm saying like a true breakout player, I'm thinking of a guy, oh, this is just offense, isn't it? A true breakout player to me would be someone like if Luke Schumacher or even Eric all really stepped up. Um, if I'm going to defense, oh, this is from last year. Damn, where is it? We don't have one out yet. Oh, here we go. Defense. Here we go. When I'm talking like true, uh, at, like breakout players, I'm thinking, oh, this doesn't have the depth chart. Like Cleo Mullins would be a guy who could be a potential breakout. I'm looking for like Jalen Harrell to be a potential breakout player as well. John Seema. It's John Seema. Thanks for stopping in, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, this kind of evolved into start with George Rooks and then just talk about whatever. It's kind of how these go. But that's what I like doing. Um, what else? What else? What else? Josh Ross, I'd expect to have a bounce back year. I think people are too, a little... He had a rough year last year. Ojibo, he's a wild card. Maybe <laughs> that that's a fun video idea. How about that? Five wild cards heading into 2020. Or 2021, excuse me. Got my years mixed up. Uh, Josh Ross could be a wild card, right? A guy we've seen a lot of, just had a really rough 2020. Could really bounce back, have a really good year. Could definitely see that. David Ojibo, huge, just massive wild card, right? We haven't seen the guy. <laughs> like, we don't we don't know what to expect. Cleo Mullins, another wild card. What do we expect from the, him, right? He, he was redshirt, he's a redshirt freshman coming up. Mike Morris on the interior. Giant wild card. So yeah, that, that could be a fun one. I'm saying Talon is there to go 10 and 2. Trisha coaching staff. Yeah. We'll end bad. 70, 7, 5, 8, 4. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't disagree with that. The talent Michigan has, I think they hundred percent could be a 10 and 2 team. The staff, the timing of the staff, the difficulty of a new defensive um System, everything like that, I think limits the the team to eight and four. Uh, with who do you think will be the biggest standout on the D line? I mean, Aiden Hutchinson is the guy, right? Um, Aiden Hutchinson is just he, he's got to be the guy for me. Um, I'm I actually think Mozzie Smith could be a really huge piece if he can put it together. This is the year. If we were to see anything from him, this it would be the year. I'm not high on Michigan's defensive line overall. Um, but I think Mozzie Smith could be a guy. But uh, but I, I'd be interested to see. We, we've heard a lot about... Uh, I think Jalen Harrell's a guy who could make some noise as an edge rusher. Uh, John Seema, I mentioned, um, I mentioned Hunter Dickinson. I said it's great. You know, I think getting that feedback from the NBA is smart. I would expect him back this upcoming season to develop his right hand and his three-point shooting. 
and I'd expect Michigan to kind of feed into that a little bit more to d- develop him as a more well-rounded guy. But I would expect him back. Um, I'd put if I put a percentage on him coming back versus leaving, eighty percent returning, maybe seventy-five, twenty-five. But I think he's returning. Uh, biggest stand on D line, yeah, I, yeah, that's what I was uh, saying before. I think Mazzy Smith could be a guy. Um, I hope. Who is the Oregon State transfer to Michigan? The massive. I need to do a video on him still. Maybe I'll do that towards the end of the. Oh, this is not what I wanted. Transfer Michigan. Jordan Whitley. 355 pounds, man. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I hope he provides depth. Okay? I hope that's the case. Hinton? He could. It's defensive line and specifically defensive tackle, man. It's got to be one of the hardest positions to really project. It's got to be. I think without a doubt. Easiest is maybe corner. Cornerback. I think cornerback's probably one of the easiest just because you know immediately. Um, Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Defensive line. I think defensive line has enough bodies. It's just a matter of what's the ceiling on the interior. Because you know what you get with Aiden Hutchinson, Right? Braden McGregor is a is a guy who could really provide some great, great depth as a strong side defensive end. Really excited to see what he can do. But he's coming through an injury, so it's hard to say about him. Yeah, Whitley is, is a crazy story, man. If you look up Jordan Whitley 24-7, Jordan Whitley, Whitley 24-7. Got to remember there's two T's there. Uh, he was a member of the class of 2014. Isn't that crazy? It says 2017. That's not right because that that's out of JUCO that he came out of out of uh, Laney College. But he was a 2014 running back commit. Isn't that that's like it's the wildest recruitment I think I've ever seen. 2014, 24/7. Does he? Even, yeah, here you go. Wait, is this him? Yeah, this is him, right? He was 6'2", 225 out of high school, running back. What a crazy, crazy story. I mean, it looks like we're watching film from the 90s, right? <laughs> When's the last time you had to pull up a YouTube video to watch someone's highlights instead of huddle? So yeah, man, if it, I mean, he brings some athleticism, right? <laughs> oh, with the slow-mo, we got the slow-mo. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, he brings depth, right? And it, I, I treat this very similar to when Michigan got the commitment of Willie Allen out of uh, Louisiana Tech, who just transferred out of the program. Um, what a block. You see this block? This crackback block, boom, right in the backfield there. What a great block. Um, I treat this commitment, Jordan Whitley, to Michigan the same as I did. Wow. Uh, And what I mean by that is if he comes in and provides depth, that is great. If he starts right away, that's trouble, okay? Um, Not trouble necessarily because, he, you know, getting a nose tackle is always good. And I guess I just mean if other guys start over him, that means that Michigan has someone they're confident in um, in filling that spot rather than relying on a guy who's just coming in, you know, in the summer. So that's kind of what I mean by that. I'm hoping he doesn't start right away for that reason. Upshaw doesn't get talked much about. Any word on his progression? That's a great point. I feel like I haven't heard his name at all. Taylor Upshaw. I haven't heard him brought up at all, and this is the year I would have expected him to. And he's another guy who would really have, um, who would have really benefited from the move to a three-four, right? Because he he fits that mold of a strong side defensive end, a guy who can play five tech, a guy who can, um, 
you know, move outside if he needs to be kind of just like a larger strong side defensive end. And I just haven't seen him a whole lot, right? He's not he's not mentioned all that often. Like where is he even mentioned here? Did I skip? Oh. He's not a backup like that linebacker as like an edge rusher. I don't know, man. He seems like a little too big, right? So I don't know. I I I'd expect him to be a part of the rotation, but I just haven't heard a whole lot about him. Uh, JW would be good in nose tackle. Yeah, he will. Didn't Jordan have an injury that held him up? Yeah, Jordan Whitley had like an ACL tear, I think, early on. And this was, you know, back in 2014 or whatever, 2015 when ACLs weren't just like a seven-month injury. So I think that's when he like started to gain weight and they transferred over to the JUCO. He's got a crazy story. Yeah, I think, and he's only had like one full year of health at Laney College that got him at Oregon State. And then he was also injured at Oregon State, something like that. So he's got a really, really crazy story. He'll go down as the guy with like the longest eligibility possible, right? Because let's count the years. 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. He's going on his eighth year <laughs> with eligibility. That's crazy, right? It took like multi-year injuries. So like he had his red shirt. He had a medical red shirt. He had a COVID year. He had like an additional waiver or something. So it's crazy. Okay, guys, I got to take off. I'm going to work on, I got to work on a video. I, I actually, I'll spoil it here. I, I had an inter interview today with, uh, let's see, drum roll, please. Had an interview today with Lewis Hansen. So this will be next episode that I cover top 300 tight end. So I got to ask him some questions that'll be featured in the next, uh, next episode. I'll put his responses, some good answers to some of those questions. Um, so that'll be a good episode. So I'm hoping to get out, get that out on Monday. I'll talk to Anthony amazing brew. Might get an extra day for that for Memorial day. We'll see. I'm going up North, Northern Michigan for the weekend, taking Friday off. But yeah, this will be a good episode. Uh, if you guys can like this video, that would be very helpful. And if you can subscribe, I just got to mention it every time. No problem, Andrew Decker. Appreciate it, man. James Taylor, I think he'll cut some weight, play at like 335-ish. That, that'd be the hope. That'd be the hope. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out. Matthew, James, Andrew, Aaron, John, Seema. Appreciate you guys coming out. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Have a good Memorial Day. I'll see you guys hopefully that Monday night. And uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. And uh, have a good one. All right, take care.